on this occasion the oath I have taken before you and before God is not mine alone but ours together. I was still in law school. Uh, he uh, sent an assistant to see me and then called and asked if Ann and I, actually he said, would you and your little lady uh, come out to the LBJ ranch and spend the weekend so we can get better acquainted. Oh, I love Lady Bird. Um, I will say the first time I met her, I thought, you know, golly, she's kind of old. And of course I was 27 and she was 45. <laughs> and I thought, what do I talk to her about? Looking back now, I think, you know, that's, that's bizarre. Here she was really a very young woman. But from my uh, thinking in those times, the, uh, there was more of a, uh, I think, a distinction between a younger woman and a, quote, older woman. But she was great to me. She just did all she could to make me comfortable in Washington and was dear to our five children. You know, it was the beginning of, of literally a life-changing experience for us. Uh, my plan had been, to, I was clerking in a law firm while I was finishing law school, graduate. I already had an offer to go to the district attorney's office in Houston. I wanted to get experience as a litigator. Uh, but my mentors, including the senior partner at the law firm where I was clerking, said, if you have a chance to go to work for LBJ, you mustn't miss that. Although I told him, you know, I can't, I'm right in the middle of a building project for Joe Albritton, and so I could not leave without his blessing. And he said, well, what's, what's Joe's phone number? I gave it to him. He called back in 10 minutes and said, Joe thinks that's a great idea. Uh, one year I turned in uh, to 16 years on and off the payroll when he was vice president, and then of course at the White House when he was president. Uh, one thing about LBJ, he, whether or not uh, you were on the payroll was just a detail. If you were there and you were willing, he had an assignment for you. I was, during that period, um, uh, had been uh, traveling uh, with him and for him, and uh, this was 63. Uh, the day before, two days before the assassination, I had been at the LBJ Ranch. I came through Houston and saw the Kennedys and the Johnsons, the Kennedys obviously for the last time. But then I came back here and actually went to the, to the funeral at St. Matthews with President Johnson and, and other members of, of the staff. And then I was involved in, from California in uh, President Johnson's re-election in 1964. I mean, obviously, the, the whole country was mourning for, for months and months and months, maybe that whole, whole year. And I think, quite frankly, uh, that in part gave impetus to President Johnson's ability to then help fulfill much of the dreams and ambitions of President Kennedy, and certainly much of his legislative program, civil rights, and later on the voting rights and so forth, um, the country sort of came together. It was, you know, people all over the world remembered what they were doing at the time of Kennedy's assassination. But by 64, um, you know, there was joy in Washington again, and it was an upbeat time, and the inauguration, of course, was a celebration of the of the, of, the, of the largest majority by Democratic president since. Uh, and, um, and it was a wonderful, wonderful time as, as it's building up to be uh, here shortly. Uh, you know, inauguration, if you back up, it's, it's really the celebration of, the, of one of the most uh, dramatic uh, processes in a, in a democracy is the peaceful change of power. And in this case, it was a continuation but nonetheless, it was a very joyful occasion. A lot of inaugural parties and the state society parties and, and the presidential ball and the inauguration luncheons and parades and all of those things that, uh, that we were right in the middle of. I had, as I said, been announced as chief of protocol, had the, I was sworn in at the end of the inauguration, but we were involved in the activities. I was up on the platform uh, when the president took the office with the uh, diplomatic corps and was sitting down with the wives of the diplomats, even though I had not officially become his personal ambassador, that was just a day or two away, so he wanted me to be with Let me interject just one little thing that I remember from sitting there with all of the diplomats' wives, and mind you, I was very active in the PTA. I was not involved with the diplomatic corps up to this point, but they were wonderful to me. But I happened to be seated next to the wife of the ambassador of France, very elegant, gorgeous woman, Nicole Alphonse. 
And Nicole was sitting there with this big muff and had her hands in her muff and it was so cold and she looked at me and then she said, I, would, would, would you like a, a piece of candy? And I said, well, what do you mean? She said, well, here. And she pulled a candy bar out of her muff. And I remember thinking, oh, she's human after all. And she was so much fun. And we came to know each other very well during the rest of her time here. It, it, it was a transformative period. Uh, President Johnson was very mindful and said so, that he would, he would have given all and doubt of him uh, not to become president on those circumstances. But at the same time, he recognized that a president's uh, time of effectiveness is a short shelf life. And he set about changing education, tried to change poverty, civil rights, including voting rights. He passed 400 pieces of legislation, important conservation, uh, rivers and harbors, authorizing the Kennedy Center. People associate that, as they should, with with the, uh, the late President Kennedy, but that was done by, by President Johnson. Um, he never attached his name to one piece of legislation. You don't find, if you went into the legislative records, the Johnson bill. He always believed it, it, it was more important to get something done than it was to take credit for it. But it was an absolutely unheralded period. There's never been another period in history where so much has accomplished legislatively in such a relatively short period of time. The thing I think that was most uh, touching in terms of my relationship with LBJ is there was no limit to what he would ask you or accord you the opportunity to do as long as he saw you performing. He would just keep piling it on. He had, it was a unique opportunity, not just for me, but a lot of other young people around him. If you were near him and he needed something done, he would reach out to you and and say, Lloyd, I need to do this or that or the other, and you knew it was way beyond the scope of the job, but you did your darndest uh, not to disappoint him. But he stretched you. He stretched you, that's exactly right. That's yes. a good way of putting it. He stretched each of us beyond what we saw our own capabilities yeah. of achieving.